Hello, I'm Jill Letting Vid, and today's lesson is on the subject of rhyme. Okay, so you may have seen some of my videos on poetry. Have a look out for my poetry playlist um, on the channel. So this is part of that. This is all about rhymes, which often do appear in poetry. Okay, so uh, what does it take to create a rhyme? How do two words rhyme? So it may seem obvious. You may, you know, have a, a, a good instinct for, for what is a rhyme. But just to say that it has to be two things. Um, the vowel sound has to be the same and a consonant sound also has to be the same. So, for example, this is a very old fashioned, this is the kind of thing children learn at school when they first go to school. Uh, the cat sat on the mat. So we've got a, ah, this is the phonetic symbol for the a ah sound in these three words, the letter A, A. Ah. So cat, sat, mat, you can tell that you can hear that those rhyme. Um, but also the T at the end has to be there as well. Um, cat, sat, mat. So two things, vowel and consonant. Okay. So if you're ever looking for a rhyme, of course you can Google it. Uh, there are websites that help you to find rhymes, uh, but you can think uh, of it for yourself. If you go through the alphabet, that's the way I do it. If you've got at as your basic word or component, cat, sat, mat, you can go through the alphabet. You can go at, b, bat, c, cat, um, F works with it, fat, uh, H, hat, um, mat, uh, P, pat, R, rat, uh, sat, um, V, vat. So you just go through the letters of the alphabet and see if that's a real word or not. It has, well, usually it would have to be a real word not one that you're just making up. Um, okay, so that's one way of doing it. And so in poetry, uh, the rhyming often comes at the end of a line uh, and it rhymes with another line, not necessarily the, the line next to it, but there could be some alternating rhymes, uh, but it's called an end rhyme if it comes at the end of the line. Uh, you can also have internal rhyme. If, uh, if you see a word maybe in the middle of the line, it might rhyme with the word at the, of the end of the same line, or there may be a word in the middle of one line which rhymes with another word in the middle of another line. So don't just look at the ends of the lines for rhymes. You might find um, rhyming internally as well within the line. Okay. Um, you can also have in poetry, if you're analysing it, you can have what's called a half rhyme. That's if you're not using both. It's a half rhyme. So if you have the cat sat on the man, you've still got the same vowel, a, 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 but you've got t, t, n. You've got an N here instead of a T. So it's still got the, the vowel sound, but it hasn't got the consonant sound with it. So that's called a half rhyme because it doesn't have both. OK. And then you can also have a visual rhyme when you're seeing it in print. If you look at these two words, uh, they've got R-O-U-G-H, both of them. Uh, but when you say them, you find that they have different vowel sounds. This is through, when you go through somewhere, through a tunnel. The train went through the tunnel. But this word, do you know how to pronounce this one? 
this word is pronounced rough. So this is through, and that's rough with an F sound at the end. So they look so similar, but they sound completely different. So that's a visual rhyme, but it's not a, a sound rhyme. And the same with this one. We've got O-N-E, O-N-E, but this one's pronounced alone. And this one is gone, O, O. So the vowel sound is different again, alone, gone. Okay, and this one, um, well, wind, there is a word wind. When you wind some cotton or some wool, you wind it into a ball. But there's also the, the pronunciation wind, when it's a windy day in the weather, wind. Um, but this is pronounced find. So if it was wind and find, that would be okay. But it's not. If this one is to do with the weather, the wind is blowing. You've got wind and find. So you could call this a half rhyme, possibly, because you've got ND at the end. Uh, but the vowel sound is different. So it's visual and a half rhyme in this case. Um, and then finally, just to say, if you're interested in poetry, and you may be writing poetry, possibly, um, but rhyming isn't enough to make something poetry, uh, because poetry also has to have some content. It has to be saying something, um, hopefully something quite deep, deep thinking something perhaps philosophical or something that's uh, quite emotional. And rhyming on its own, it's just a technical thing. Um, rhyming on its own doesn't create a poem. Uh, there's a lot more involved in choosing the right words, having the thoughts behind the words as well. So um, that's just something to bear in mind. Rhyming isn't enough. There are some poems that don't have any rhyme in them, or very, very few rhymes, and they're really good poems. So, you know, if you read a few, uh, and with that in mind, you'll see what I mean. Um, okay, so that's the lesson for today. Um, you might like to try it out yourself with different... If you think of any word and then go through the alphabet and try to think of, um, uh, of, of rhymes to go with it, uh, that's a good exercise to do. It also helps you to check your vocabulary. Um, okay, And uh, do have a look at any of my other videos that uh, include poetry. Uh, look for the poetry playlist on the channel. Um, and have a look at those. And if you'd like to do a quiz to test your understanding of rhyming, uh, just go to the website, ingvid.com, and uh, give it a try. Uh, so thank you for watching, and I uh, hope to see you again soon. Okay, bye for now.